Welcome to the weekend edition of your Bible Study News Update for Friday, April 8. Education Minister Kim Makani is mum on disciplinary action being taken against two teachers for running in the January 9th general election. Educators Alwyn Bob and Pedro Shepard, who contested seats on behalf of the Democratic Labour Party, received correspondence from the Ministry of Public Service this week, indicating they would be sent on leave with half pay from Wednesday for a period of six months. Press for a comment on the development following the handing over of 100 STEM kits donated to the ministry today, McConney had this to say. At this point in time, I would prefer not to comment on that matter. As you know, um, it is already moving forward through our court system and I prefer at this time not to make any comment on this matter. Minister McConney turned her attention to the conduct of face-to-face -face classes which resumed on February 21, Overall, she was satisfied that the COVID-19 protocols at schools were followed. As we said from the beginning, it was going to be phased. Not everyone would have been able to go back to school at the same time, simply because of that three-foot distance and the fact that not all schools had the capacity using that three-foot distance to be able to bring all of the students back to school. We did, in fact, um, decide that there might be a hybrid approach in some cases where the school's capacity was not there to bring everyone back. And that in fact has worked generally well. We, I am especially pleased with the fact that persons have mostly been following the protocols. And while yes, there were some um, incidences of COVID within the school system and teachers and students and staff, we have had no wide outbreaks. That means therefore, that while the expectation was met that, yes, there will be some cases because, you know, schools are just a microcosm of the rest of um, Barbados. We, we, what, is, what we are excited about is the fact that the protocols have been followed. Barbados's two newest senators are ready to represent the interests of Barbadians. This morning, head of the Department of Government, Sociology and Social Work at the UWI, Dr. Christina Hines, and Dr. Chelston Brathwick, a former ambassador to China and former head of the Inter-American Institute for Cooperation on Agriculture, were sworn in by President Dame Sandra Mason at State House. Following the ceremony, Senator Hines made clear she is an independent senator and her focus is on serving the country. So I am independent. Um, to my understanding, you know, we call it opposition senator, but they're really senators that would be appointed by the leader of the opposition. In the absence of such, the president appoints. So, so you, you see yourself there? Okay. I am independent, yeah, okay. definitely. All right. All right. Go ahead. Yeah. No, I was going to ask you, do you have any particular positions that you may want to push, any messages that you may want to push uh, in the Senate? No. All right. Um, what, what would be your keen areas of interest um, within, within um, in terms of government legislation that's coming up? Uh, what would be your keen areas of interest in that department? My interest for now is doing the best that I can to ensure that I am a good senator that contributes to the benefit of Barbados. That's my focus. I don't have an agenda. Senator Brathwaite said he fully intends to be a voice of reason. I see myself fitting into the role of a senator. A senator who brings to the table constructive analysis of challenges, who can identify opportunities, and who can do all in my power to promote the development of Barbados. In my role, I hope to bring to the table almost 50 years of experience, in management, in agriculture, in food security, and in diplomacy. And in that context, I hope that given the challenging situation in which Barbados finds itself at the moment, where we are confronted by a global reality that these are in fact turbulent times, where the world faces the challenges of a pandemic, the challenges of a war, the challenges of climate change, that we'll be able to fashion a way forward for our business. Barbados has a new peace ambassador, his second form Dighton Griffith student, Najari Chase, whose kind deeds paid off. 
More in this report from Mishran Robinson. Second form Dighton Griffith student Najari Chase, who went viral because of his act of kindness in returning a British visitor's wallet, is now Barbados's newest peace ambassador. The designation of peace ambassador within the Ministry of Education, Technological and Vocational Training is the highest award within the school's Positive Behavior Management Program. Chief Education Officer Dr. Ramona Archer Bradshaw praised Chase for bringing honor to his school, but most of all to his country. The title of Peace Ambassador 2022 is being bestowed on Master Jerry Chase for his act of random kindness in returning a wallet to a visiting British tourist. This action again made a positive impact on Barbados, of course, in the eyes of the region and the rest of the world. Father of the new peace ambassador, Jeremy and Chase, said in the midst of the hype and excitement surrounding his son, Najari's act of kindness came as no surprise. A great surprise because knowing Najari well, I know for sure that's something expected. But it was kind of another poor moment knowing that he did something good. Chase recounted the incident which led to the viral video showing his random act of kindness in returning the British visitor's wallet. I was walking and saying, what? Well, I saw the guy got his wallet. And I just took it up and took it for him. That was in addition to his title as Peace Ambassador, Najari was awarded a prize in the form of a staycation for a family of four from the Hilton Barbados Resort for his embodiment of the Barbadian spirit. And now for today's COVID-19 update, the Best of Santos Public Health Laboratory identified 369 new cases of the virus, 172 males and 197 females from the 1,290 tests conducted on Thursday. The cases comprise 68 persons under the age of 18 and 301 who were 18 years and older. There were 76 people in isolation facilities, while 1,983 were in home isolation. The death toll stands at 379. There's regional and international news after this short break. More oxygen means more energy, means more adventure. Pure Oxygen, natural spring water infused with more oxygen to improve your energy, immunity and performance. The next generation of hydration. Pure Oxygen, nature's ultimate water. Caribbean Cool is a refreshing juice drink that contains 100% vitamin C that you can enjoy any time of the day. It has a refreshingly awesome range of Caribbean flavors. Moby, orange, fruit punch, pineapple, sorrel, and pineapple coconut. Suitable for any occasion. Caribbean Cool. The regional news in Jamaica, pill parties and the consumption of edibles. New trends which the police say are causing mayhem in schools, especially in St. Catherine. TVJ's Kalisha Williams has the story. First, there were guard rings and school fights. Now, students have taken up a new trend of popping pills. They're having pill parties. Pill parties. Back in the day, you hear about ecstasy. Ecstasy was a party drug. You make you feel nice and you do your thing. Now, this molly thing has surfaced. It is not an over-the-counter, I'm told. I'm told that it is... It is under the counter. So there's the underworld that is pushing this. It's especially a challenge in St. Catherine South. Detective Corporal Damien Hammond is a safe school coordinator for the division. When they got to the pill party, a 14-year-old went and he started to gyrate on the ground and do some stuff. Didn't know himself that to rush him to the hospital. And so this is creeping in. The parties involve students from the same schools who are also getting creative in how they conceal contraband. They are not just camping ball and jobs and cakes and cookies. They are laced with ganja. So ganja is the binding agent in these products. And you have what is called now alcohol gummies. So the, the gummies are laced with alcohol, soaked, infused. An adult told me that when they, when, it, when they smell the thing, it was as potent as just drinking it from the bottle. On the international front, people living in parts of Australia's largest city have been told to evacuate as torrential rains hit the country's east coast. 
Rescue workers pull a 95-year-old woman to safety in the city of Wollongong, south of Sydney. Torrential rain along Australia's east coast has turned roads into rivers and forced thousands of people to evacuate their homes. We ask the community to continue to be vigilant. This is a highly dynamic situation. These events are moving exceptionally quickly, um, as uh, was witnessed in the Illawarra um, this morning, uh, where we saw uh, in the space of about three quarters of an hour significant downpours, uh, significant flash flooding. Intense rainfall in the state of New South Wales has caused repeat floods for months. Several towns are still battling to clear debris. Australia's East Coast summer has been dominated by the La Nina weather phenomenon, typically associated with increased rain. Unfortunately, we continue to be in a La Nina um, event, which we know for New South Wales means that we can expect to see higher than average rainfall conditions, which is exactly what we've seen over the past couple of months. And we are expecting La Nina to continue um, throughout the remainder of April. The extreme weather made worse by climate change has raised questions about how prepared Australia is for such disasters and authorities are warning of more rain in the coming days. That's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbidastoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates or like us on Facebook and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.